Welcome to tonight's discussion on the impact of COVID-19 on the prospects for economic recovery in Greece. My name is Kevin Featherstone and I'm a professor here at the London School of Economics. Tonight's discussion is hosted by the Hellenic Observatory at the LSE in collaboration with the Hellenic Bankers Association of the UK. It's also part of the LSE's programme on shaping the post-COVID-19 initiative. The observatory is once again collaborating with the uh, HBA, the Hellenic Bankers Association here in the UK, and we welcome its members uh, joining us uh, this evening. And a special welcome to its president, Louis Lozidou, uh, who, with whom we've collaborated on many previous uh, occasions. In the recent past, the observatory and the association have hosted uh, a number of speakers, uh, Paul Thompson of the IMF, Jerome Dejelblom, uh, previously president of the Economic and Finance Ministers uh, Council of the EU, and a number of senior bank leaders uh, from Greece. The context of our discussion tonight is, of course, the severe debt crisis that Greece has endured since 2010, and uh, its recovery uh, since that uh, process. Indeed, set on the uh, road to recovery, can Greece maintain its progress? What are the opportunities? What are the risks? How far does Greece's strategy uh, depend on the European Union's recovery fund? What can it realistically expect from the EU recovery fund and when? How does the Greek government respond uh, to the recommendations of the commission led by my LSE colleague Chris Pisarides on the uh, future development strategy for the Greek uh, economy. Well, we have a great panel this evening to discuss uh, these important uh, questions. Uh, in particular, let me uh, welcome the minister, uh, Christos Tikoras, Minister of Finance in the uh, Greek government. Uh, he will begin by outlining his strategy and comment on the uh, challenges that Greece faces. We've seen this week renewed controversy domestically within Greek politics. Uh, the minister joins us from his victory in parliament uh, yesterday. We then have three expert uh, respondents uh, to give us their views and comments on what the minister has said. Dr. Yorgos Nikolaou is chairman of the Ferreras uh, Bank chairman of the Hellenic Bankers Association in Greece and chair of the Athens Stock Exchange. Professor Eleni Lori Tentunu is an alumna of the London School of Economics, a fellow of, of the Hellenic Observatory. Uh, her day job is that she's a professor of economics at the Athens University of Economics and Business in Athens. Indeed, she's the chair of the economics department there. She was deputy governor of the Bank of Greece between 2008 and 2014. Last but certainly not least, my colleague Dimitris Vianos, Professor Vianos, is professor of finance at the London School of Economics, where he also directs the Financial Markets Group. He's a former managing editor of the Review of Economic Studies, and most recently, he's been a member of the Pissarides Commission on the future development uh, for Greece. We welcome uh, each of our speakers uh, and uh, we look forward to the discussion. Before we begin, can I ask you please to all note a number of things. You can comment on the discussion as we proceed uh, using the Twitter hashtag and the hashtag we suggest for tonight is hashtag LSE Greece, nice and simple. Um, I'd ask you all to note that tonight's event is being recorded and it will be available in due course as a podcast downloadable from the Hellenic Observatory uh, website. We also invite you to uh, send us your questions at any time uh, in the proceedings tonight. If you're watching via the uh, webinar connection, you can send us your questions using the Q&A box, which is at the bottom of your screen or if you're watching on Facebook, you can use the comments uh, function. Please may I ask you to keep your questions uh, clear and short, uh, and uh, we can then get through as many as possible. Uh, so 
Let's start this evening, and I would like to give a very warm welcome uh, to the Minister of Finance for Greece, uh, Christos Tikoras. Minister. Thank you, Kevin. Indeed, we had two victories, two consecutive uh, victories, one on Sunday and one on Monday, because yesterday we voted for the new insolvency code. First of all, I would like to congratulate the organizers, the Hellenic Observatory at the LSE and the HBA UK for their initiative to organize this online public event regarding the post-COVID-19 challenges and prospects of Greece. It's a great pleasure to share this digital floor with distinguished speakers who will surely enrich our perspectives through their thought-provoking remarks. Our discussion is taking place in a period of high uncertainty due mainly to the coronavirus pandemic, not only the coronavirus pandemic, but mainly due to the coronavirus pandemic. An exogenous shock with its current, indeed, second phase of the crisis. We have a lot of new cases in Greece today, leading to the shrinking of the European economies at unprecedented rhythm. Unavoidable, the same happens for the Greek economy. Nevertheless, until now, until now, it has depicted the Greek economy on remarkable resilience. According to the provisional available data for the first semester of the year, the Greek economy shrank by 7.9%, while the average growth rate at the euro area was minus 9%. For the whole year, we currently forecast a session of minus 8.2%. This is also the consensus of the market at the moment. This is now converging towards the European Commission's forecast, whose latest forecast has been adjusted to minus 9% from an earlier forecast of minus 9.7%. We believe that this is the result of the timely taken, comprehensive, well-targeted, and dynamic package of policy measures adopted by the government to support public health, liquidity in the real economy, employment, and social cohesion. The prompt response of the government was praised by all institutions. As mentioned in the enhanced surveillance report, on quotes, the Greek government has to date managed to contain the spread of the coronavirus outbreak and mobilized a large amount of measures to limit its social and economic costs. Indeed, we implement fiscal and non-fiscal measures of a total value of 24.2 billion euros, around 13% of GDP to support households and enterprises. All these are financed by the prudent and neat management of the country's cash reserves. Cash reserves, which are currently reached 37 billion euros, one of the highest size at the European level, and which have been significantly strengthened over the last year through seven successful debt issuances of a total amount of 16 billion euros. The highlight was the most recent 15-year GGB issuance at the lowest borrowing cost ever for the country. At the same time, amid the crisis, we proceeded with the implementation of important structural reforms. Indicatively, tax measures and incentives for investment, which strengthen the growth potential of the Greek economy were introduced. The institutional framework for corporate governance has been upgraded and modernized. The framework for microfinance has been enacted. The asset development plan has been boosted. Plans to enhance the sustainability of companies like Calvo, Scaramaga, Sibiat, Slyco, have been put into action. As mentioned 
in the seventh enhanced surveillance report, good progress has also been made in the investment license reform, the energy policy, public administration, and the digital transformation. Let me stress that during the last three weeks, just to pick up the three last weeks, despite the outbreak of the pandemic, first of all, the new insolvency law, the new insolvency code was voted yesterday by the parliament. It introduces a unified code for restructuring and bankruptcy of individual and corporate debt for the first time in the country's history. Second point, Hercules, the asset protection scheme for the reduction of NPLs continued to be deployed by systematic banks, most of which have adopted the scheme. It operates effectively while banks maintain satisfactory liquidity levels. Third issue, a proposal brought forward by the Bank of Greece, which aims to address simultaneously the stock of NPLs and DTC is being reviewed by the Greek government. The proposal will be assessed in terms of cost benefit for the Hellenic Republic and the financial stability and should also be approved by all relevant stakeholders. Fourth issue, just to mention the last three weeks, the fifth directive on combating money laundering and terrorist financing was incorporated into the national law. It also introduced restrictions on anonymity surrounding digital currencies, digital wallet custody services, and prepaid cards, and sets criteria and safeguards for transactions to and from high-risk third countries as defined by the European Commission. Fifth, significant work has been done in the Hellenicom project, progressing two days ago on legal backdrop for land partition, demolition of buildings, plus a large number of other work streams. Simultaneously, one week ago, the Gaming Authority announced the preferred bidder paving the way for the award of the casino license. Six, five interested parties submitted expression of interest for the Kavala Port Authority on Friday. And the previous week, four parties for the Alexandrupoli Port Authority. Consequently, despite the difficult circumstances, we have made good use of the time in order to speed up reforms, aiming at ensuring a solid base for recovery. Nevertheless, we do not turn a blind eye, nor are we celebrating. We are fully aware of the fact that the Greek economy continues to face significant challenges related to continued medical uncertainty and pre-existing legacy problems. We are working prudently and methodically to overcome difficulties, to tackle, to successfully tackle the health crisis, population movement, geopolitical turbulences, and the return of the economy to the pre-crisis level the soon as possible. Moreover, to take advantage with prudence of the fiscal flexibility which will continue to exist in 2021, and of course, to make the best use of the available European funds through the implementation of our national recovery and resilience plan. At this point, I have to stress that Europe's response to this crisis has been prompt and dynamic. Important decisions were taken and both fiscal and liquidity boosting measures were activated. The big challenge is to make the new instruments for tackling the health crisis and its consequences fully operational 
the soon as possible. Greece is expected to receive through the recovery and the resilience facility about 19 billion euros in grants, which while it can receive an additional 12.7 billion euros in loans up to 2026. Furthermore, it will raise 40 billion euros from the multi-annual financial framework for the envelope for the period 2021-2027. The first disbursements through the RRF, because you asked it, amounting to around 5.5 billion euros, are expected to take place in 2021 and are projected to give a boost of two percentage points to growth according to our baseline scenario for 2021. The National Recovery and Resilience Plan will be the springboard to reorient the Greek economy to a new production model and thus to achieve high, sustainable, clever and social fair growth. It poses a unique opportunity for Greece to boost economic activity through both investments and reforms that will have a prolonged and sustainable impact on the country's long-term economic outlook. The Greek government is already working hard on the completion of this plan, which will be submitted to the European Commission in the coming weeks. A high-level task force has been formed in the Secretary of the Government to coordinate the proposals submitted by every ministry, to align the proposals of the Strategic Growth Plan by the Pisaridis Committee, Dimitris most probably will discuss about that, to the policy priority of the government, and to monitor the implementation of this plan and the utilization of these funds. Furthermore, a special unit for the recovery fund will be created, we voted for that yesterday, in the Ministry of Finance. The big challenge ahead is to achieve high and sustainable growth and to improve its composition. Greece faced for many years a significant investment gap. We have to close it. In this direction, we are setting forth two interrelated objectives. The first is how we will close the negative out gap, safeguarding at the same time responsible public finances. And the second, how we will improve the economy supply side, the productive capacity, in order to achieve sustainable and inclusive growth rates with a high level of social cohesion. To achieve these objectives, we have ambitious plans for the period ahead and we are already working on that. We plan to make the best use of these funds in order to implement policies based on the objectives set by the National Recovery Plan, which include, among others, first of all, the implementation of a prudent fiscal policy with a gradual reduction of tax rates and social contributions. The strengthening of the banking system, including the reduction of NPEs. The continuation of the privatization program, as well as the exploitation of public property. The digital transformation of the public sector. The simplification of the license procedures and the reduction of the bureaucratic burden. The implementation of structural reforms concerning the regulatory framework for businesses the faster delivery of justice, rural policy, and other issues. The promotion of investments, emphasizing on the development of infrastructure, on digital technologies, on the industry stimulation, on the stimulation of endogenous sources of growth and development, such as education, research and development, innovation, and of course, on the green, on the green economy. Among other areas, Greece plans major investments in areas including efficient use of energy, networks 
upgrading, renewables, recycling, waste management, protection and enhancement of natural environment, and biodiversity. Such investment will underpin sustainable growth and job creation in ways that protect the environment and social cohesion. Take advantage of all the above, we will have the opportunity not only to recover, as is the title of the session, but to enter a strong and sustainable upward trajectory. An opportunity that we are decided to size in order to restructure the economy, to enhance its productivity and to improve its competitiveness, especially structural competitiveness. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Minister. Let me pass straight away to uh, Dr. Yorgos Handrianikolaou. Can you unmute yourself, please? Okay. Thank you very much, Kevin. And let me also take the opportunity to thank the Hellenic Observatory of LSE and uh, the Hellenic Bank Association for the invitation. Very glad to be here. Um, in listening to uh, uh, the minister's uh, remarks, I have to say that I'm in broad agreement with his comments. And uh, what I would like uh, in my remarks, I would like to expand on the few points he made and also to a little bit expand on the acti activities of the Greek banking system of which party uh, I am a party of. Uh, I would agree with the minister that Greece has dealt with the COVID crisis better than average, but it's important to understand why. The, the crisis found the Greek economy in the best possible position it has been in the past 10 years. It, the economy had the positive momentum and it was growing above the European average. And uh, also the prospects of the Greek economy were also above average, fueled by a proactive pro-business government with an ambitious reform program. But equally, the crisis found the Greek banking system to be in the best position it has been in the past 10 years. It had accretive profitability. It had stabilized the cost of risk. It had made significant progress in reducing NPEs. It had plans to deal with them effectively by beginning to approximate uh, European levels in the next three years. And most importantly, it had the capital that was required, which is above the required supervisory, it was above the supervisory uh, levels. Uh, so a lot of, we got in 2020 with very good headway, with very good backwards actually, not headwinds. And, uh, but COVID, as we all know, had different plans. But despite, the uh, severity of the COVID crisis, uh, Greece coped with the situation quite well. And we have to give credit to a large extent here to the Greek government, which responded very quickly and efficiently with programs that aim to support both individuals and businesses through a variety of programs with an imaginative use of European funds. And uh, it managed to provide through the banks, liquidity to the Greek economy fairly quickly, arresting some of the bad consequences of COVID. Equally, the Greek banking system responded effectively to the challenge that was uh, faced with, aided by a loosening of the supervisory framework and also taking advantage of the available cheap funding from the ECB and uh, I have to say that it rose to the occasion and by the end of uh, August, it had pumped 14 billion of new liquidity in the economy. Um, so from the beginning of the year at the end of August, it has pumped even more since then. And as we all know, we have, uh, the Greek banks have offered moratoria in the capital repayments and uh, which amount to approximately 20 billion uh, for loans to individuals and businesses, 7.7 uh, .7 of which are for mortgages and uh, about um, uh, 1.7 for consumer loans, about 10 billion for SMEs and so on. So uh, 
all this, despite it, the heavy reliance of, to, uh, of the Greek economy on tourism, it has managed to avoid the worst uh, estimates. And as uh, the minister said, we have done slightly better. Some of, the, of our Southern European uh, uh, colleagues, uh, countries uh, around um, Italy, Spain, France, etc. So it's fair to say that the Greek financial system has proved to be very resilient. And not only it, it was not a problem in this part of um, the crisis, but it was part of the solution. Now, as we look forward, and uh, with the worsening of the crisis, as is evident in the last few days in Greece, it is the situation is getting more cloudy. But uh, in my estimation, as if we manage to cross the next few months and we cross into 2021, where, as the minister said, the first European funds will start coming in, that will, if we manage to have this crossing successful without, without major casualties, I think we will be able to regain the momentum which we entered in 2020 and get further impetus by the European funds, which, as the minister said, would add at least 2% to the growth trajectory of the Greek economy. Uh, of course, for this to happen, the reforms which uh, the minister outlined uh, characteristically they have to take place because the success uh, of, uh, of achieving this extra 2% will depend very much on the ability of the country to utilize the funds. And uh, unfortunately, the track record of the Greek economy in absorbing some of the structural funds from Europe has not always been the brightest. So I do hope that the country uh, utilizes this opportunity, this unique opportunity to um, make use of those funds and restructure the economy, as the minister said, and reposition Greece for the future. The banking system will do its best to assist this effort by channeling efficiently the funds when if it's given an opportunity, it will step up to the plate to do so. So I will stop here and I will respond to any questions that may come. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, can we pass right over to uh, Professor Lori Tandunu? Well, hello. Uh, first, let me thank uh, the LSE, the Hellenic Observatory, and the HBA for the invitation. So, uh, as the minister has uh, said, it is by now well understood that the Greek economy will undergo a very deep recession in 2020. This recession can only be compared to the worst year of the financial crisis, which has been 2011, when the recession was minus 9% of uh, GDP, minus 9% actually. We have lived through the painful consequences of the financial crisis, which has been the worst uh, post-war economic disruption in our country. Even the 1974 recession barely exceeded minus 6%. So, I mean, minus 9% was the worst uh, we've seen. These consequences uh, we've, we lived, we've lived through have been unemployment, bankruptcies, poverty, brain drain, loss of human and physical capital. This time, although the depth of the recession is forecasted to be close to that of 2011, the IMF uh, forecasts it will be even higher. The, IMF, uh, uh, the IMF's forecast is 9.5%, minus 9.5%. Things are different because of concerted European action as the crisis is exogenous and has hit all EU member countries. On top of the ample liquidity provision by the ECB at minimal cost, and let me remind, uh, remind us that uh, the cost is 100 basis points below the basic rate, which is 0%, i.e. banks are paid 1% to get liquidity from the ECB through the targeted long-term refinancing operations, provided they have adequate uh, collateral, of course. So, on top of the ample liquidity provision by the ECB and the relaxation of fiscal rules, a recovery fund has been agreed upon to provide grants and loans to the pandemic hit countries. 
So we hope if we manage to mobilize these resources in time, things will improve soon. To grow, Greece needs investment and investment needs finance. And I can see two problems here. One related to the loans of the recovery fund and the other related to the loans banks are hesitant to extend to the private sector. So uh, first problem related to the public investment. Public investment can be very powerful, uh, especially in times of uncertainty like the one we're going through now. The IMF have recently estimated that an increase of public investment by 1% of GDP raises private investment by 10% and growth by more than 2%. It also reduces unemployment by 1.2% and strength strengthens confidence in the recovery. So we need public investment projects to be channeled to the designated areas of green transition, digitalization, innovation, education, employment. Government intervention and public investment can guide the private sector to invest where national priorities are. With a recovery fund approximating 32 billion for Greece, as the minister said, many worthwhile projects can be financed at least with the grants to become available. But a large part of the recovery funds come in the form of loans, which will increase government debt and are submitted to conditionality. The governments of Spain and Portugal are already discussing that they will not tap any of the loans, or at least they will try to minimize loan funding. With borrowing costs as low as they are today, especially for some richer EU countries, some of them are likely to avoid the loans as well. So my question to the minister is, how is Greece facing this challenge with respect to the loans of the recovery fund? And uh, a related question is, uh, um, are you thinking of starting borrowing against future grants before their formal approval so that no time is wasted? I've seen that Spain has uh, uh, started thinking about it. The second problem is, is related to private investment. Uh, private investment needs uh, bank credit. Capital markets are not developed enough and Europe has a bank-based financial system. But this is difficult in Greece. Although private sector deposits have increased by about 20 billion since January 2019 to August 2020, from 133 uh, 30, billion euro in January 2019 to 152 in August 2020, credit to the private sector has shrunk by a similar amount from 169 billion euro in January 2019 to 148 billion euro in August 2020. This is not supporting private investment. In a sense, we have reached a point that credit expansion is very restricted in contrast to the ample credit expansion of the first decade of 2000, which was unnecessary as we discovered, when bank credit increased at a much higher rate than the GDP. So the main reason, I mean, why banks are, are hesitant? The main reason banks are so hesitant to expand credit is the mountain of NPLs they are facing. Before COVID, the NPL ratio was the highest in the EU. 35% of total loans were not serviced compared to 3.5% uh, in the EU. Post COVID, the NPL ratio is expected to climb up further. If banks are not helped to reduce this burden, which consumes their profits and reduces their capital, they will not be able to finance growth. So encouraging the creation of a bad bank would be a step in the right direction, especially as the European Commission says, it does not see any European AMC to materialize soon, but a network of national asset management companies, which will cooperate may be valuable. So the minister said they, they have a plan, which they are, they are looking at now, but uh, I believe this is a pressing issue. So how does government see the national asset management company challenge, which to my opinion is necessary to the banks to start lending again? I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you, Eleni, very much indeed. Uh, last, last but not least, uh, Professor Vianos. Can you unmute yourself, Dimitri? Okay, I unmuted myself. I also need to share my screen. So let me see how I can do that. Oh. Um, why can I off? I, oh boy, 
I don't see how to do that now. It was working before. Uh, Dimitri, happen. share your screen. Yes, yes, I'm okay. It's coming now. Here. All right, good. I can see your emails, I think. Yes. Do you see what do you see now? What do you still see my emails now? Yes. Oh, that's embarrassing. Okay. So let me let me try again. Oh boy. So uh, hello, this is LSC events. I can share my screen for you if you like. I'll share my screen on behalf of you now. Okay. Oh. Okay, now I think I can do it. Okay. Is it okay now? Yes. All right. Okay, great. Thank you. Sorry about that. So, okay. So, um, so thank you also for uh, um, Kevin for inviting me to participate at this very interesting event. So, um, the um, what I will do is that I will uh, kind of focus a little bit more on the macro and uh, long term uh, perspective, and um, could talk a bit uh, later about. Um, um, maybe in the Q&A about the reforms and the kind of the, the more kind of micro um, efforts at the microeconomic level. Um, Minister Staikuras touched already on some of the reforms that um, are in place and indeed some I think some of them are very significant like the insolvency reform that uh, was just passed or uh, their uh, efforts for um, the NPL um, resolution. So but let me stick, stick a bit to the macro picture, kind of just to put things in a, in a, in a broader setting and or, over the longer term. So as the previous kind of pretty much everybody, uh, everybody bef uh, before me kind of touched on, so the, 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 we are expecting a big recession for 2020. This is the forecasts by uh, E of A, a um, minus 8%, minus 8, minus 9, kind of somewhere in, the, in that range, uh, down from 2% in 2019. And um, in 20, 2021, kind of things are quite wide open. So under an optimistic scenario about how the pandemic is going to play out, there, there is a recovery of um, between 4 and 4.5 percent. But it is possible we can all rule out that the kind of things will uh, kind of tough um, restrictive measures will be continued to will continue to be put in place in 2021. And um, so the tourism sector might not be able to kind of fully function. So anyway, so there's also kind of a more negative scenario. So this not, it's not kind of out of the question that the recession unfortunately can continue in 2021. Now, uh, in terms of the, uh, as you can see kind of in this current account uh, surplus, so Greece, there was a slight deficit in 2019, uh, 2.5 billion. So in 2020 has become very large, primarily because of tourism has been hit um, hard and um, so minus 7.9 billion and also the um, primary surplus uh, there was a primary surplus in 2019 it has turned into deficit because of all the supportive measures that were rightly being put in place but the, the bottom line is that kind of things are the economy kind of has received a significant hit and um, it could take time to um, to recover of, of course fortunately there are, there are the eu funds uh, in the way so Let's talk a little bit more about the long term. So these are some calculations that we are putting together for the um, um, Pisarides, for the Pisarides committee report. Uh, so um, so now we're looking a bit more between, let's say, the next for the next ten years, and um, we're so there is kind of a let's call it a default scenario. The, let's call it the pessimistic kind of let's call it the the, the default scenario. This is the, a growth of let's say one point seven percent. For the next 10 years on average and um, Greece right now is at um, GDP per capita is 67 percent of the EU average in 2019 and uh, in that kind of um, let's say business as usual scenario it, it would this would barely move would become 68 percent so Greece could stay more or less where it is in terms of uh, relative um, um, wealth so GDP per capita and um, Okay, so the, under an optimistic scenario, which we view kind of as a sustained uh, reform program and good use of uh, EU funds, the, um, we can see uh, EU, uh, GDP growth going up to 3.5%. Uh, with uh, So this has to be made out of two things. One is employment growth of 1%, 
and um, labor productivity would have to go up by 2.5 percent i will drill a bit down into these numbers shortly in the next slide they, this would take greece in 2030 to 81 percent of uh, gdp of uh, the eu average in terms of gdp per capita and exports to gdp would reach 50 percent 50.5 percent still kind of greece would be lagging in terms of export to gdp with other similar size countries in terms of population in the eu but would have kind of be a significant progress so question is how can we achieve this optimistic scenario and unfortunately given the bad initial condition with the pandemic so how can we can achieve this optimistic scenario so let's let me talk a little bit uh, about the kind of nitty gritty. Of course, one has to get, drill down more into the micro uh, side, kind of the re specific reforms and uh, the, the report that is going to be, the Pisaridis report is going to be, put, to, to be out in, a, in about two weeks, is going to go in a lot of detail about this. And we can touch upon a bit if, in the discussion if you, if, if you wish. So how can we get this increase in employment of about 1%? So First of all, unemployment rate, there is an easy kind of way, um, win, which is the unemployment rate would decrease. Now it's quite high, 17%, which it could go down to as low as 7% in, in 10 years. On the other hand, demographics work in the wrong direction because there is a re reduction in the working age um, uh, people just due to the uh, population becoming older. So what one has to play quite a bit uh, on is the increase in labor force participation through various structural reforms that would encourage, let's say, women to enter in the labor market, more women, uh, the younger uh, people to kind of find, find more easily jobs and skills, uh, as well as the uh, older people not to retire, not, not to have early retirements and want to, lay, to leave the labor force. On the increase in, so that's for the increase in employment. Then the, one has to increase also how much a given worker can produce. So we estimate that uh, under the good scenario, the optimistic scenario we would have, we can achieve an, uh, an increase in total factor productivity of 1% annually. This has not been unheard of, has been achieved in, in Greece has achieved this in, in its past history. Uh, for example, between 95 and 2002. And uh, investment would have to increase significantly um, to, um, to about the EU average, which is, uh, so corporate investment plus, plus public investment, which is kind of the total productive investment would have to become about 17.5%. Uh, now, as uh, Minister Staikura said, um, I, 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 I thought was, this was right to the point, the um, EU funds in the, should have a dual role. First of all, to boost growth in the per first part of the decade. And second, to provide the infrastructure, the conditions for growth, for more sustained growth together with um, uh, uh, many structural reforms that should take place uh, soon in the next few years. So, they, so that the growth during the second half of that decade should take place primarily through private investment and gains in productivity. And um, Kevin, do I have a couple of minutes or I should be done, wrap up? Yeah, okay. So the, there was one uh, kind of um, question in this, um, 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 in the, the way the event was, um, was put in the advertisement of the event, which is kind of different sectors of the economy and their pot a contribution, potential contribution to future growth. So let's talk a little bit about exports. This is a partial uh, uh, view, just focusing on the export uh, sectors. But okay, so Greece right now exports 37.2% um, um, of its, um, uh, G uh, in terms of GDP, uh, of goods and services. And uh, while um, um, if you look at the, uh, countries that have a comparable population as Greece, um, the, in the EU, the figure is much higher, 65% uh, approximately. So we said that under the optimistic scenario, we could raise this to about 50% after 10 years. So kind of get half of the way there. Let's, it's, in, it's instructive to compare Greece to other countries, uh, to these other countries in terms of different sectors. And um, what is quite stunning is the comparison when one looks at industrial products. So manufacturing. So Greece, um, uh, Greece's exports to GDP is are 9.2 percent, while for the other countries, the comparison countries is 38.2 percent. This is kind of where the big difference uh, arises. So tour Greece has kind of a bit higher tourism um, ex um, um, than the other countries. That's not surprising. We know that Greece is quite good in in that industry. Has a comparative advantage. Um, transport is includes shipping. Also, we know that Greece is doing quite well in um, in um, in that part. So, um, so um, the um, 
Greece also lags significantly relative to other countries on the uh, kind of the last um, row in the table, which is special other professional services, kind of things, things such as IT, uh, engineering, healthcare, kind of specialized knowledge intensive professional services that uh, uh, could uh, export to other countries. Maybe people, uh, Greeks can sell these services remotely or can um, travel kind of back and forth to other countries and uh, provide the services. So we think that um, this, uh, the area of industrial products, which is kind of a big sector, covers I don't know, um, um, uh, chemicals, covers, uh, can cover environmental uh, um, um, in the industries, I mean, recycling, can, can cover lots of um, shipping, shipbuilding, I mean, so it can cover lots of different parts of manufacturing. This is where there is, in principle, should be quite a bit of uh, potential for growth, and especially relating to uh, innovation. This kind of uh, manufacturing is a fairly innovation intensive industry. And um, so in professional services also, which is kind of uh, skill intensive industry, there could be quite a bit of uh, area, um, scope for growth. And even in agro food, where Greece is again lagging uh, relative to um, these comparison countries. These are kind of fairly important sectors that Greece can, can gain. Uh, and of, of course, kind of it can maintain its comparative advantage in tourism and to some extent in shipping as, as well. Okay, so let me stop here and happy to kind of talk later in the chat about um, uh, kind of more the more micro side of things. Thank you very much indeed. Um, perhaps my colleague can take the slide down. Uh, that, that's good. Um, thank you for these uh, excellent points. I guess, Minister, uh, we should logically uh, come back to you. Uh, I wonder if we could um, give some kind of focus to these uh, points by uh, picking up certain uh, themes. Um, to begin, perhaps, with uh, the points made by uh, George Hanjinikolaou. Uh, he responded to your point about the significance of the EU recovery fund by essentially posing the question of whether Greece can absorb these funds effectively and make the maximum use of them. Uh, Professor Elori Dendrenu also then raised the question of how Greece is going to handle the grants and the loans, Spain and Portugal have uh, apparently said that they would not accept loans. Will Greece? And um, how effective uh, could the uh, Greece uh, Greek absorption be? Do you want to respond, uh, first of all, on the EU recovery point, uh, fund points, please? Oh, okay, I'd like to make some more comments. Uh, first of all, I will start from uh, what Dimitris presented before. I am less optimistic regarding um, the primary deficit for 2020. It will be larger and unemployment will be higher. However, we are much better optimistic about 2021. So for example, for 2020, we expect a primary deficit of around 6% of GDP, much higher compared with what was presented. But this has to do with the measures we are taking in order to tackle the COVID-19 consequences. However, we have three issues that are in favor of what we are doing. And George Hadzinikolaou presented a couple of them. Today, uh, uh, a study coming up by, by Eurostat was released. And it says that in the second quarter of the year, the unemployment rate, unfortunately, in Greece, uh, increased even in Greece, but at the lowest level compared with all other European countries. Recession is not at the highest level at the European level, and deficit, definitely, will not be the largest one. This means that we are taking the necessary measures, targeted on the way to reduce the social and economic consequence of the crisis. The second comment has to do with what Eleni uh, asked before. We have started thinking about how and where we will use these loans. And I have to admit that the European level, there are many open issues yet. It is not clear. We need clarifications and clarity 
regarding where and how we can spend this amount of money regarding loans. Because for example, we may need to use this amount of money in order to enhance the liquidity in the real economy. Like what we did with the repayable advances. This means that we will not have a negative effect in the medium term on public finances. But at the moment, there is no clarity at the European level where whether we can use this amount of money for that reason. This is why we are discussing all these issues at the European level with many other countries like Italy, Spain, and Portugal. And not forget that quite recently, the European uh, uh, Commission uh, released and presented the priorities and the main pillars that we can uh, distribute the amount of money either for, from grants or from loans. Another issue that was raised by Joe. Sorry, Minister, could I, I, I apologize. Could I just um, pick up on that, uh, that point about the, um, the loans? Are you saying that um, the position is unclear or are you saying that the Greek government would accept loans even with conditionality? It's unclear. At the moment, we're presenting some issues and we're discussing all these issues with the European Commission. I would like to inform you that on a daily basis, uh, my colleagues in the cabinet and in the steering committee are contacting with the European Commission in order to have some clarity on how we will present and what we will include on our program. I have in front of me what was presented in the 17th of September. Even for the European Commission, this is something that has not been done previously. So we are trying to find how we will present all these projects, mature projects, on a coherent way that uh, will be synchronized with our national growth strategy, which will be presented on what Dimitris and his colleagues will present to the Greek government in a couple of weeks. Does that, does that mean that if the rules of the game haven't been clarified, the receipts and effectiveness of the, the funds will be delayed? First of all, it's obvious that all projects and all programs coming up from the European member states will be evaluated in the first months of 2021. And we expect a portion of the amount of money we expect for 2021 around 5.5 billion euros to start being distributed from the second quarter of 2021. This is why, although all this amount of money have a, a huge multiplier, growth multiplier, we have not incorporated that on our estimations, on our projections regarding growth for 2021, because we know that we will just receive this amount of money without having the chance to use them, to absorb them on the proper way. A final comment regarding the banking sector, because this was also raised by George and Aleni. Definitely, NPLs, NPEs, is, is a major problem on banks' balance sheets with DTC regarding the quality of equity but let's concentrate on the asset side. We have said from July 2019 that we are open in order to implement all systematic solutions that will give the chance to the Greek state, to the Greek banking sector, to reduce significantly NPLs as soon as possible. The same applies these weeks, these days. This is why I said in my introductory remarks, that the Greek government has started discussing with the Bank of Greece in order to evaluate what was presented by the governor recently. We have taken some advisors. We will see, uh, of course, uh, what are the fiscal implications of that proposal, what are the implications of the real economy, and of course, we have to discuss it with institutions and stakeholders like Digicom. But generally speaking, we are open and we want to apply 
supplementary systematic solutions in order to reduce significantly as soon as, as, soon as possible NPLs. We know that it is vital in order to enhance the investment grade of the Greek sovereign. So the answer to Eleni Lori's question about um, an asset management company, would you encourage that? The answer is yes. The answer is that we're examining it. And it was very clear. At the moment, as a Greek government, as a Minister of Finance, we're discussing the proposal. We don't say that we don't agree. It's a supplementary solution. It also tackles the DTC issue. But first of all, we have to see what are the fiscal implications. As a Minister of Finance, I have when, to take into account that option. And when would you expect to be able to make that decision? Uh, <laughs> I think that in November, I, I will be in a much uh, better position to, to reply on that. Okay, many thanks indeed. I want to come to the questions which are coming in from uh, the- Sorry, Kevin, uh, we would like until the Eurogroup that will take place at the end of November to have a, ma a much better view regarding that systematic solution. Okay. That will give you a, a timetable and- Thank you, that, that, that is uh, helpful, thank you. I want to go to the questions from the audience. I wonder if uh, I can just pick up on two points which have been covered in the discussion uh, so far. And if I could just ask you, Minister, to respond very briefly to these uh, two points. Um, one is in terms of increasing the export potential. Um, I was reading uh, just the other day about a concern about the administrative costs on exporters in Greece uh, and uh, the need to relieve that, that burden. Um, the suggestions, I think, associated with the Pesarides Commission about creating an export agency. Is that something which uh, we can do? Dimitris was outlining in his graphs the need to increase exports, particularly in terms of uh, industrial products. Um, their dreams, unless uh, the burden on exporters is, is to be relieved. And the second question? In order well, to... the, so, so, the, so the question is, uh, um, are you going to incentivize um, Greek uh, firms to export by reducing the administrative costs, the bureaucratic burdens on SMEs who uh, seek to engage in exports for the first time? There are some ideas in the Greek government in order to incentivize uh, these companies that uh, you mentioned before. We have already started working on that. We provided investments in order to enhance research and development in Greece, in order to create business angels in Greece. And definitely we're going to provide many more incentives on what you said before. The second comment has to do with the bureaucratic uh, burden. Definitely, we have proved that we implement structural reforms in order to reduce this burden in the real economy. However, I would like to make a comment. Many times we have been asked in order to take specific actions, especially to reduce taxes and social contributions in order to enhance the real economy we have to take into account that we cannot take permanent measures uh, in the COVID-19 period. This is why we want to close this parenthesis as soon as possible and continue implementing the prudent fiscal policy we followed until February 2020. So yes, indeed, we are going to provide incentives in order to enhance exports and extroversion. And one more comment in order to give you an idea of what we're going to provide. We will try to create incentives, tax and non-tax incentives in order to enlarge Greek enterprises, in order to increase their size. This is vital in order to reduce, among others, tax evasion. Okay, great. One last quick question from me, if I may, to pick up on uh, some of the things that have been said. Um, 
several comments have been made about the need to improve the court system, to improve public administration, to en enhance institutional quality, as it were, in Greece. I'm sure if foreign investors were watching this uh, discussion, they would feel that they've heard this song uh, for a number of years, uh, that the need to improve uh, the public administration, speed up the court system, to avoid being um, ensnarled in the judicial uh, process with the uh, investments. If you were speaking now to a, for a potential foreign investor, why should they have confidence that this time it's going to happen? First of all, because we're delivering. I have proved that even during and over the COVID-19 crisis, we continue to implement structural reforms. And this is not only coming from the minister or the minister of finance, this is coming from the European Commission, from all institutions, that even during this crisis, uh, we continue to implement structural reforms on the fields that you raised before. This is when the, in my introductory remarks, I mentioned what the European Commission on the Enhanced Surveillance Report wrote recently for public administrations and for the court system. And the specific comment, we have started discussing how we speed up the process in the courts uh, yesterday in the Greek parliament. So this means that we continue implementing structural reforms and delivering on specific reforms that are necessary in order to attract foreign investors. The result is that on two entities, like for example, the ports in Alexandria and Kavala, we had great interest the previous week. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. I'm going to go to the questions posed by the audience and forgive me, I'm reading these through the um, column on the side of the screen uh, here, but uh, there's a, a question from uh, Louis Louis, uh, sorry, Louis uh, Luzidou, uh, president of the HBA uh, here in the UK. Um, and perhaps I could open this to each of the uh, speakers. What are Greece's options if the impact of the pandemic persists in the summer of 2021 and the proceeds from tourism are not any near, anywhere near the pre-pandemic levels? So essentially, uh, what are the prospects for the economy that we've just been talking about if tourism takes a much bigger hit because of the, pa the pandemic uh, continuing? Can I invite any of you to speak on that? I just, uh, I will just make two comments. First of all, if this occurs, we have to take additional fiscal measures, expansionary fiscal measures. And we are ready to take this. We have the cash buffers. This is why we have done all these uh, issuances recently in order to be able, uh, if needed, to use this amount of money for expansionary fiscal purposes. And we have targeted measures. If you have a look on this specific instrument we have created, which is called repayable advances, not to provide liquidity in the real economy through the banking sector, but directly by providing money through the Greek budget, you will see that on what we distributed this week, this week, a large amount of money went to enterprises that operate in the Greek islands. Hmm. The track record is Heraklion and Rhodos. Why? Because we incorporated the reduction of revenues in July and August. So if this um, exists and continues for one more summer, we will have the amount of money in order to apply to the real economy. We will continue uh, making expansion and fiscal policy. But at the same time, when we will discuss in May, a, uh, June at the Eurogroup and the ECOFIN level. What we will do regarding the fiscal rules, targets, and the requirements for 2022 onwards, this means that we should have fiscal relaxation even for 2022. Because at the moment, we have agreed for 2021, and we said that in May 2021, on the baseline scenario, 
we will discuss how we will have a soft landing. If we have a significant problem next summer, of course, we have to incorporate also 2022 because tourism is the major pillar of the Greek revenue. Okay, thank you. There's a question here specifically for uh, the which was fine us from, uh, I guess, our mutual friend, uh, Miranda Xafar. The Pissarides reports, sorry, the Pissarides report notes that Greece spends more than any other Euro area countries on pensions and public sector wages, 28% as opposed to 23%, but it stops short of making any proposals to tackle this spending imbalance. Any ideas how to do it? Dimitri. Okay, so there will in the in the new version of the report there will be some ideas, and um, yes, yeah, so certainly we, it is an issue that uh, pensions and um, uh, public sector wages kind of are significantly higher than uh, the Euro, Euro EU average because this means that other important parts of the public um, kind of, uh, uh, pub, of, of, of uh, public expenditure are underfunded. So, um, so um, in, in this instance, uh, even healthcare, but even um, uh, kind of aspects of education, aspects of um, uh, other aspects as well. So, we will, we do make some um, um, uh, we'll make some concrete suggestions. Some of it has to do with kind of keeping um, as, has, as actually Greece has agreed already, uh, keeping a kind of a pension expenditure relative to um, GDP to on, on a declining path, as has already been agreed by, 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 by government, by, by the previous government and this government. So, um, so in other words, this means that pensions should not be rising faster than GDP. Actually, they should be, they should not, they should not be cut, but they should not be, they should be um, rising more slowly than GDP. And also, of course, there are significant, um, uh, the significant, I think, significant um, areas of uh, savings in the uh, public sector. Uh, through um, um, kind of more efficient, um, um, more efficient through, for example, the use of uh, more digital technologies, uh, cut um, so some tasks can be certainly done more, uh, maybe automated, be done uh, faster, um, and so maybe also that um, public sector um, uh, uh, hiring and employees can be. We can focus more on kind of particular kind of high high skilled employees on specific areas as opposed to a kind of more. Um, kind of repetitive um, um, tasks that can be automated. So, I mean, people are, are going on retirement uh, in the public sector. So when one replaces them, one has to think along this, uh, this line. So there are areas where one, one, one can cut. Thank you. Staying with this theme, there's a question from Harris Lambrinopoulos. Uh, and it's a question specifically for um, George Hunt and Gina Nicolaou and for the minister. Following the integration of Greek state pension funds, is the Greek government's and or the Ministry of Finance also considering a review of the law from the 1950s, which requires Greek state pension funds to hold a minimum of 77% in Greek government bonds? If so, would the Greek state pension funds be allowed to acquire shares of companies listed on the Athens Stock Exchange as private investors? Could we start with uh, you, George? Thank you very much, uh, Kevin. If I may, a very quick remark on the question you put on the tourism. All the, first of all, let me put myself in the uh, camp of the optimists that I think <laughs> with the upcoming uh, uh, advances in the medicines, we will take care of the problem by next summer. But having said that, I, although I agree with the fiscal measures of the minister, I would like to see measures taken now to diversify the dependence of the Greek economy on tourism. It is a very important sector, granted, but I think we should be doing better in other sectors as well. And we should be starting doing this yesterday. So I would intensify that. So having said that, in return to your question, I would say there is, a, there is an aspiration on the part of the Greek capital market as expressed primarily through the other stock exchange to play a bigger role in uh, raising capital to finance the Greek economy, the growth of the Greek economy. And uh, for this to take place, there's an urgent need for significant structural changes in the environment where we operate. 
One of those is the changes in the pension system that we have made and series of proposals to a, to a task force which is headed by the ministry of Mr. Saikura's ministry to see how far we can go. A cornerstone of the, some of these plans is, as I said, the reforms in the pension plan where we emphasize the need to set up private pension plan, plans, but also changes in the, in the government pension plans because we need to find ways to increase the flow of investment flows to the, the Athens Stock Exchange. This will provide the environment where companies will come in to raise money. This is how it happens in most other countries. So we look forward to hear the reaction of the government to the proposals we are putting forward. Thank you. Can we invite the minister to respond briefly? I will not respond on that issue because <laughs> we are not the leading ministry. You know very well that the Ministry of Labor uh, is responsible for that. However, I don't want to avoid what we are asking for on two issues regarding your last question, but also a new pension system are two priorities of the Greek government and we're discussing them, but the Ministry of Labor is responsible in order to apply specific policies. What we are responsible for, and we're working on that, Complementary to what Dimitris said before regarding the automatization of uh, the public sector, uh, we are uh, operating spending reviews. Spending reviews are vital in order to make more efficient use of public finances on the Greek state, but also on the general government. So we have applied spending reviews to all ministries and we would like to go to the general government entities. Thank you. There's several questions, and I'm going to try to link them uh, together, which is in terms of uh, whether the government has a strategy for attracting uh, FDI. There's a number of questions about uh, inward investment and um, uh, how are Enterprise Greece presently targeting uh, investment uh, in impact? Uh, I wonder if I could ask the minister to pause for a moment, but br bring Dimitris uh, and Eleni in. Uh, Dimitris, the Pissarides Commission has talked about uh, the need to uh, increase um, uh, foreign uh, investments, but um, uh, to what extent do you think the, the government can develop uh, such as a, a strategy in line with your optimistic scenarios? Um, okay, so uh, I mean, I think that the, I think the government has already done has already taken a number of sig significant uh, steps in uh, various uh, kind of legislative efforts. And there are, we see some results. I mean, the more recent, a recent one was the Microsoft uh, um, uh, decisions to have to have a, to do a significant investment in Greece. Mm. So um, of course it's a sustained effort. And in our report, we have a number of proposals ranging from uh, um, like specific kind of um, uh, giving emphasis to tax issues and kind of how to uh, simplify tax um, issues for um, foreign investors investing in Greece, kind of uh, having kind of um, one-stop kind of um, uh, um, uh, agency to um, address these issues. And uh, of course, but, but it's a multidimensional thing. One has to think about also some um, aspects of um, in the, some issues of, uh, pertaining to the justice system, about even the design of the laws and to have kind of efforts to simplify the way laws are, are being drafted. So I don't think this is going to happen from one day to, to the next. So um, some, some issues perhaps pertaining to taxes um, can be uh, addressed kind of fairly quickly, kind of some tax incentives. But um, in terms of um, improving the overall environment, I think this will be a sustained effort, which will take many years. So mm. uh, we have a number of recommendations to that regard. Okay. Uh, there's a question more specifically, let me uh, read it from uh, Robert, which says, Greece lags behind other countries in terms of attracting ESG investment. How are Enterprise Greece presently targeting inward investment in terms of impact and ESG investments seeking to change this? What is the target that Greece hopes to achieve from these forms of investment? 
Uh, you also touched on the need for energy, waste management and biodiversity investments in order to fac facilitate sustainable economic growth. But does this not neglect other areas, farming, production and tourism? And what, in, in your view, enables Greece to compete internationally for this type of uh, in investment? Um, I'm sorry, that's a rather long uh, question from uh, Robert, but I uh, could ask the, perhaps the minister to respond in terms of uh, attracting uh, ESG investment into Greece. It's one of the most difficult interviews I have faced <laughs> the last month. Uh, on your previous question, F FDI, uh, yeah. I think which are the main pillars of the policy that we apply? To reduce taxes, we started working on that and applying specific tax cuts on a permanent basis before the COVID-19 outbreak. We have reduced bureaucratic burden. We have created already some incentives for FDIs on specific fields. We have simplified license procedures and we have digitalized a significant part of the public sector. This is why on the latest reports coming up regarding the competitiveness of the Greek economy, we have improved significantly the position of Greek Sophia compared with the previous four years, significantly. And we have specific companies like Microsoft. Uh, I shared with you the great interest regarding the two ports uh, during the last two weeks. I can give you an intuition that there is a great interest for difficult public entities like Elvo, Scaramangas, Laico, coming up also from abroad. This means that we attract FDIs. Definitely, we have to do a lot of more things, much more structural reforms in order to improve uh, the, the environment for attractiveness of these projects. Uh, definitely, I picked up some priorities on the green economy because regarding the RRF, the green economy and the green projects consist a significant part of the amount of money we can use from the European Commission, from the European funds. This is why I concentrated on that. Definitely, we have to follow specific policies for farming, for tourism, for other sectors. And this is why the steering committee we created at the Prime Minister's office uh, takes all the proposals from the different ministries, which concentrate on how we will apply specific policies on all different sectors that we have, or we may have um, competitive advantages. So yes, indeed, what we will propose in about a month to the European Commission, we will have specific concrete actions and policies on all these fields coming up from the different ministries of the Greek, of the Greek uh, government. However, I will repeat it, a significant part of the money will go to the green economy and to digitalization of the public sector. Thank you. There's a question from Panagiotis Vakas, uh, which says that, let me just find it. Given that Greece is a service-based economy, what regulatory measures should, should Greece take, or is it taking, in order to boost its service exports and participation uh, in GVCs? And this is a question which was put uh, specifically to Professor Vainos and to um, to the Minister. Dimitri, do you want to uh, start there? Sure. So I think that an important part of the story is... Um, um, if, one second, I want to, to maximize it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, an important part of the story should be uh, kind of tax issues. And, uh, you know, the Minister um, knows these issues much better than me, but I kind of certainly taxes on... Um, um, labor and the social contribution should be lower than what they are now 
so that it's attractive for uh, pe for uh, people to um, be willing to work in Greece, skilled people, people at high, fairly high salary levels. So if it if um, if tax rates for um, kind of medium and higher salary levels are very high, um, it would be very hard for people kind of. Um, uh, providing this skilled kind of services to um, be willing to reside in Greece. Either Greeks who are going to move abroad or will not have enough foreigners to come to Greece. Likewise, it would kind of tax regimes for foreigners who come to Greece and settle in Greece should be fairly advantageous, should be fairly easy for foreigners to come to Greece. I think that's a big part of the story for Greece to improve itself as a, because it's a nice location. People like to live in Greece. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful place to live. But if, it, if the tax regime is very bad, then people will not come to, to live in Greece. <laughs> Minister, the question was, um, how can you boost service exports? Just to comment, I confirm what Dimitri said before. We have to reduce taxes and social contributions. This is why on a permanent and one-off measures, we have already concentrated on these policy priorities. I would like to remind you that um, uh, tax for enterprises has been reduced to 24%. And social contributions have been reduced both for 2020 on a permanent base by 1%, 0.9%, and an additional one of 3% reduction in 2021. So we concentrate on how we will reduce taxes and social contributions. And I will repeat it when we will close the parenthesis of the health crisis, we will continue implementing um, policies regarding tax reductions. At the same time, I would like to make uh, an additional comment. We have created in incentives in order to attract foreign investors or pensioners. For example, on two omnibus laws, we have specific incentives for non-DOM for non schemes. And this is uh, why already we know specific cases that have been applied in Greece in order to take uh, disadvantages, uh, especially tax advantages. Okay, thank you. I've already considered that retirement in Greece is uh, highly attractive uh, for, uh, for me personally, so I would uh, look forward to that, uh, to those incentives. Uh, there's a question from uh, Yorgos Vitoyanis, uh, which is to say that uh, the total debt ratio may climb to over 200%. Uh, does this create problems in implementing the kind of expansionary fiscal policy that you have mentioned, uh, Minister? What are the limits? We are following a very prudent fiscal policy. This is why the amount of money we take, fiscal measures, I well targeted. And this was mentioned even for my colleagues and for my EMF. Regarding the debt issue, there are two issues, the debt problem, there are two issues. Debt to GDP, but also the annual financing needs of the gig debt, the profile of the gig debt. We have managed since 2012 to improve significantly the profile of the Greek debt. This means, and this has been conferred by ESM, that Greek debt uh, is sustainable. We will continue applying expansionary fiscal policies if needed and when and where needed in order to tackle the negative consequences coming up from the crisis. But at the same time, we will try to absorb a significant amount of money coming up from the European Commission in order to enhance the denominator of the ratio debt to GDP. And I think this is crucial. A final comment, I should stress the critical importance of the next generation EU program through mainly the proper and efficient use of grants from the recovery and the resilience facility. And this is critical in order to achieve the optimum design and shift implementation of the national uh, recovery plan. Thank you. We're going to run out of time. Can I invite each of our speakers to make 
Any last comments picking up on the many points that have been raised? Can I start with uh, Eleni, perhaps? Any comments you wish to uh, make very briefly, please? Well, uh, just again, to revert to the need uh, of banks uh, and uh, uh, to revert to the need that uh, we should support the banking sector as much as possible. And the AMC is necessary. Hercules has been a very good uh, example, which has been uh, used by the banks. But it's, it's really, I mean, they are, we, we managed to restructure the banking sector. We only have basically four banks, which are solid, which are well capitalized, etc. We have to help them get rid of this mountain of NPLs okay. and be able to finance uh, the economy. So thank like you. That not, yeah. Thank you, Eleni. Sorry. That logically comes uh, to you, George. Uh, any last brief comment? I would say that the Greek banking system has not proven to be a constraint in the growth of the Greek economy. And as we look forward, I think growth is the game changer here because as they say, when the when tide comes up, all the boards are lifted. So I think we need a healthy amount of growth an investment explosion in order to achieve this. And we stand there to, to help it as a banking system. And I also would like to say that it's a unique opportunity that lies in front of Greece with the next generation fund to utilize it in order to reshape the country and position it for the future. Thank you very much indeed. Um, if uh, the panel will uh, forgive me, I can see that we're about to be cut off. Uh, so can I thank um, the minister? Can I thank uh, our respondents? Uh, minister, uh, you have a few seconds. A few seconds. Just to give you an, on titles, I, I cannot say more and more things. Our pillars on the, Greek, on the green economy, power up, renovate, recharge and refuel, sustainable use of resources. On digital, connect, modernize, digitalization of businesses. On employment, promote job creation and participation in the labor market, educational and training, improve resilience, accessibility, and sustainability of health care, and increase access to effective and inclusive social policies. And finally, on the fourth pillar, private investments, taxes, modernize public administration, improve the efficiency of the justice system, strengthen financing and capital markets, financial markets and capital markets, promote research and innovation, modernize and improve resilience on key economic sectors and private investments. These are okay. the major pillars that we will send to the European Commission in about a month. That's very, uh, that's an encouraging note to, to finish on. Can I give you, uh, my warm thanks to each of you? We are about to be cut off. Can I remind the audience though, that you can uh, access future events with the Hellenic Observatory next week, a week on Thursday, we will have a special event with Foreign Minister Nikos Danvias. We look forward to inviting you to join that discussion as well. But my thanks to the Hellenic Banking Association of the UK, and my thanks to everyone who's participated, but especially the minister and our respondents. Thank you and good night.